again, back in South Africa, we tend to call them budgias. Uh, you can either do a potato budger where you dip it into the batter and fry them. Uh, back in Durban, most, if you go to the Indian part of town, they are really cheap and delicious and you can get a bag of hot steaming budgers that makes the most delicious snack. My dad always treated us to a bag of this. On most Fridays, we always could look forward to something like it. My mom always made delicious budgers. And now I'm going to show you how to make them. So I've got all my ingredients prepared and ready. So let's get cracking. So to start with, we have roughly a generous cup of chickpea flour, also known as gram flour or besan flour, which is a more Indian term for it. We can use just purely the gram flour if you like, and that's where you can keep it gluten free. But I'm going to add about half a cup of self-raising flour to it. I'm going to add, for us to get a, a lovely good rise on the pakoras, I've got about a teaspoon of baking powder. Again, I'm also, another raising agent is about half a teaspoon of baking soda. It makes it light and airy. And these would make it look really nice when it's fried. The uh, about a teaspoon of cumin seeds or jeera seeds. These kalonji seeds also just make the outer of the pakoras look really pretty and the fact that they're black, so I'm adding about a teaspoon of them as well. I'm going to add a generous pinch of salt, more like a teaspoon. I love using my hand because I feel like I measure them a lot better. Don't want to make them too hot again because my lovely friend is going to be trying them later, so we're going to go easy. But you can also use green chopped chilies, which are always really nice in them. About a teaspoon of garam masala. And we like to get the lovely golden color, so a generous teaspoon of turmeric powder. Onions are always brilliant in pakora. I love to overdo it, so we're going to add all of the onion. That was, I want to say, a very generous cup of chopped onions. And fresh coriander is an absolute must. So I'm going to add all of this coriander in there, which is probably about two cups, I want to say. Give that all a good mix. And we've got water. I'm going to go easy on the water because I don't want the batter to be too thin. I'd like to still keep a good consistency. So I'm going to add a bit first and then mix it to see how we're doing. a little bit more I would say that's enough water so we used roughly about half a litre yes that's coming together lovely we've got sliced potato which I'm going to dip into the pakora batter and I've got some shallots that have been almost slithered and they're going to also go be dipped and fried and they'll be quite delicious. I'm going to add a little bit of salt to the potatoes first, just to coat them well with the salt so that when I dip them in batter, they just have a better taste to them. I'm going to add all these potatoes to the batter. I'm not going to overload the oil with it because I don't want the heat to reduce or the temperature to reduce. But I think we've got to manage to, we've got a good temperature. I've got it set on around medium to high. 
because I want these to go lovely and golden. I'm not frying up these shallots filled with butter and I have a feeling they're going to be delicious. You can even drop spoonfuls of the butter into oil. You don't have to coat vegetables with it. It's just as delicious. Shallots look amazing. It's the first time that I tried dipping shallots in here and frying them, but they actually look lovely. You can literally use most vegetables like tempura and dip them in the batter as well and fry them. But I'm really pleased with these. 